Boom! Hey everybody! Greetings all! Last Outrider here with the next installment of Black Legion! Ascendant. Infused with the might of chaos, the Black Legion grew in power and glory during the First Black Crusade. Under the command of Abaddon, they seized ever more victories and triumphs. It was a glorious time for the Legion as the bloodshed and death of the crusade washed away some of the memories of the Horus heresy and their great defeat before the gates of the emperor's palace. However, despite the reckless carnage and terrible destruction it caused, eventually the Black Crusade ended. Responding to the deadly peril the Imperium had gathered its newly founded Space Marine chapters and Titan legions and sent them against the traitors. Even so, scores of worlds had been silenced forever, and millions of slaves were dragged screaming back into the Eye of Terror. Abaddon had tested the defenses of his enemies and vastly increased his power with Drachnian. He also took to using the title War Master, rising to claim all that Horus once had. None within the Black Legion argued Abaddon's right to the title. The first Black Crusade was proof of his right to lead. For the Black Legion, their first foray out of the Eye of Terror had done much to restore their position amongst the traitor legions, fostering a new, grudging respect for the Black Armored Warriors and their War Master. If nothing else, Abaddon had proven that the gods favored him something not even the demon Primarchs could ignore. Conflict still sputtered and flared between the legions, but they now had a new purpose, something they had almost forgotten in the half-millennia since the fall of Horus. In the wake of the Crusade, a time of constant raiding began. From the timeless heart of the Eye of Terror, the Black Legion fell upon the worlds of the Segmentum Obscurus and beyond. Traitor legionnaires appeared suddenly from the warp, sometimes in their thousands, sometimes no more than a few dozen, to ravage Imperial settlements. Abaddon was content to give the warlord and his war band the chance to make a name for themselves, allowing them the freedom to strike where and when they would. He fostered this independence on one condition. The atrocities they committed must be done in the name of the Black Legion and at cost to the Emperor. In what would become a festering thorn in the side of the Imperium. The traitor legions, often led by the Black Legion, or even Abaddon himself, would spill out of the Eye of Terror and burn and pillage entire sectors. In the light of the dying stars and flaming cities, the Black Legion would indulge their hatred of the Imperium, indiscriminately killing servants of the false emperor and tearing down anything they saw as a symbol of the corpse god. During these crusades, whole systems would be destroyed in conflicts that would drag on for decades or centuries until, as suddenly as they had appeared, the Black Legion would retreat to the Eye of Terror their holds 
filled with slaves and plunder. The Segmentum Obscurus suffered terribly at these endless wars against the fallen Space Marine Legions. But in truth, nowhere was safe from their treacherous reach. This was something the Black Legion proved time and again as it cemented its infamous reputation amongst the armies of the Imperium as a pitiless foe. And now, a quick little side note for those who are curious. What is the Black Sword Drachnian? Now you'll find out. Drachnian, the demon sword. The origins of Drachnian are a mystery, unknown perhaps even to Abaddon himself. Demons speak of the blade in fear, calling it the thorn in reality, or the shard of madness. It is a weapon that existed long before the rise of mankind, and doubtless will bear witness to its end. Alive with a dark intelligence, Drachnian has the power to sunder the material universe with its edge, cutting through matter as a mundane blade moves through smoke. Even the hardened skin of demons, or armor sealed with the power of the warp, is little proof against its assault. As it drinks in the energy of the immaterium like water, consuming it utterly. It is said that Drachnian can take many forms, and it only appears as a great blade in the hands of Abaddon because that is how he chooses it to be. In truth, the sword has no real shape or size, or at least nothing that can be understood by the mind of men. Why it chose to let Abaddon take it from its resting place beneath the Tower of Silence is also a mystery. Though since that day, only Abaddon has been able to wield it. If another warrior were brave enough to try to lift Drachnian, it would fall from his hand as if made of air though not before rending the thief apart with warp energy. As to why Drachnian fights for Abaddon, none can say for sure, though such a pact can mean nothing but woe for the Emperor and his followers. So that's the story of the Demon Sword. But the important thing to note here is that apparently it's a weapon that is fueled by the warp to destroy things in the material world. And that is what I find is the interesting point. Because what it means is it eats warp energy. Like it says here, it drinks in the energy of the immaterium like water, consuming it utterly. So ask yourself, what is this really a weapon against? Is it really a weapon against the material world? Or is it a weapon against the warp? And what Abaddon uses it to do in the material world is just... Circumstances. The real people who are scared of this, the real beings who are scared of this are the demons themselves that can be consumed by it as Abaddon uses it. And that's the important point. And that is why I think the Emperor would let him have it. Because it's going to be used to consume something in the warp. As Abaddon thinks he's just going off to attack the Imperium, the Emperor will use it as a double-edged sword, literally, and destroy something in the warp. 
something to think about. Until next time, when we will talk about all the rest of the Crusades of the Black Legion. <laughs> Bye.